This is really itchy. It uh, does not feel good. Yahee! Happy Halloween! I'm a sexy Luigi! Oh, that sounds like Mario, actually. Ow. Ow. Happy Halloween! And what better way to celebrate Halloween than to dress up as a titular character from a popular Nintendo franchise? And speaking of Luigi, can we all just agree that he's like, the better Mario brother? You know, Luigi was always my favorite character. The guy was a real brother. He could jump the highest, not like that fake Guido have in Mario, who ain't actually a brother. It always felt like a lot of people looked at both brothers on a more level playing field, right up until they started to roll out those 3D games, where you got a stronger sense of their character distinctions. After that, then Luigi kind of became his brother's shadow in a sense. I mean, his last name is Mario, for God's sake. Okay, what's your name? Luigi. Luigi, Luigi? No, Luigi Mario. Over the years, the Mario universe has expanded, allowing characters to have bigger, more differentiating personalities. And with me wanting more from Luigi, imagine my excitement when I found out he was getting his own game that wasn't edutainment. I was so excited to learn more about our brave- And they turned him into a wimp. And the game was kind of about Mario again. Somewhere along the line, Luigi became this stick-in-the-mud, cowardly counterpart to Mario. The bold plumbing prodigy. But we all know the truth, okay? Luigi is a character with immense potential, stifled by the people around him. That's the spirit of Luigi. This guy is so undervalued that Nintendo even gave him his own year, just so he could be a dick to everyone around him. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> Even though at first glance one would assume that Luigi's Mansion was a game that played up on the cowardice of Luigi, it just can't seem to hide the fact that nothing can hold this guy down. I mean, Nintendo tries so hard to make Luigi the cowardly and less liked brother, when in reality, he's kind of the underdog. And you know what? Probably a lot braver than people give him credit for. Mario's been doing all the saving and getting all the credit when in reality, Luigi is our true hero. He did the impossible and literally saved Mario. Something I'm sure a lot of people can't say they've done. And with my love of Luigi and my love of Halloween, I couldn't think of a better combination to cover in tonight's episode. So sit back, relax, and tonight, I'm gonna tell you youngins the story of Luigi's Mansion. Oh wait, first, I kinda wanna set the mood. I, I feel like this video could use a little more atmosphere. So in honor of Luigi's Mansion, tonight, we dine at Casaloma. <laughs> I should probably suit up in case something spooky happens. You never know what to expect in these haunted mansions. Did I mention it's haunted? nice in here. What am I doing here again? Oh yeah, I'm here to tell you guys about one of the greatest GameCube games ever made. This is the story of Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion begins right in the thick of things. We find ourselves heading towards an old mansion that mysteriously appeared out of thin air, not too long before we received an invitation to view the place. Apparently, Luigi somehow won the mansion in a contest he never actually entered. We quickly come to find that what may seem like an extreme luck of the draw is actually not all that it appears to be. Entering the mansion as you make your way into the main foyer, Luigi finds himself trapped and cornered by a menacing ghost, and right when things are about to get ugly, you're rescued by- He gets, man! What is that? Is that a baby? And what is that situation going on up top? It looks like some chewed up bubble gum. That's right, this little piece of nightmare fuel is better known as Professor E. Gads, a senile old goat who's been living on the outskirts of the mansion for years inside of his ghost research laboratory, who started to investigate the mansion and clear out the ghosts after its sudden mysterious appearance just a few days prior. I call him a senile old goon because he has swirly glasses, and because there's no way in heck any sane person would refer to Luigi over here as a, and I quote, young fellow. What is he, a boomer? No, not quite. Right on the money! 
Get out of here, Grandpa. I mean, I get Luigi is the youngest of the two Mario brothers, but he certainly isn't that young. At the very least, he should be in his mid thir- After getting a closer look at Luigi, Egads confirms to him that much earlier on, he saw a guy with a red hat looking similar to you who had also approached the mansion only to disappear. And this is where the plot begins to thicken. That guy in the red hat? Well, it was your brother Mario, last seen exploring the mansion, now gone missing. Hold on a second, we were gifted our own mansion and somehow Mario sniffing around my newly won mansion a few hours prior? This little opportunist asshole, let me talk about sibling rivalry. You know what, Mario? Maybe I shouldn't save your ass. But you both have unfinished business with the ghosts. You need to get your brother back and figure out what the heck is going on, and well, he guys just wants his collection of paintings restored that were purged by King Boo and his ghost clan so he can fill up his gallery once more with his art. And in order to restore this art, you're required to trap innocent portrait ghosts back into their paintings for all eternity because they're part of his collection and it's kind of weird and immoral, but you better help him out or you ain't seeing Mario. What? So Luigi and Egads team up, and for the rest of the gameplay, it's up to you to clear the rooms of ghosts, collect all the main portrait ghosts from each stage, and have them return to their paintings, find special keys to unlock all the rooms in the mansion, capture 50 boos from King Boo's army, defeat King Boo of course, and finally rescue Mario. And I promise you, with how short the runtime is for this game, that checklist is not nearly as daunting as it sounds. There's actually a very smooth progression from completing one task to another, and it rarely feels overwhelming. In Luigi's Mansion, there are three main floors for you to explore, along with a basement and rooftop area. We start off the game exploring the second floor above the main foyer. And the second floor? <laughs> easy. The second floor serves as a nice introductory stage. This is the area where you learn the basics of the game, which will only get harder as you continue to explore throughout the mansion. There's a lot less ghost spawning on this floor, which gives the player more ease to explore rooms, really getting better adjusted to your newfound controls and gadgets without finding yourself in a tense situation. In order to rescue Mario, Egads gifts you with his greatest invention known as the Poltergust 3000, which can be used to collect and exterminate enemy ghosts throughout the mansion. I like that once you exterminate the ghosts from each room, you can also see the difference over on the map so you know what spots are safe to explore. When an area is fully rid of ghosts, the rooms will light up from complete darkness. Ghosts can't respawn in rooms that have been cleared because the ghosts hate and can't move around in the light. You can check your map and inventory using the Game Boy Horror, another invention by Egads that also functions as a communicator whenever he needs to reach you. And there's also a nifty camera equipped on your Game Boy Horror that can be used to find extra extra spooky hints undetectable to the human eye. And speaking of your inventory, you can find hidden items like gems, extra health, and keys by using your Poltergust 3000 to vacuum the objects around you. You can also unlock items by simply shaking objects. So, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. There is literally no reason you should be making that sound while you're shaking things. Finally, with the second floor being more or less introductory, there's a total of three portrait ghosts you have to collect in order to unlock the rooms on the first floor. By the end of the game, you're required to collect a total of 18 portrait ghosts for Egads, with an additional 5 portrait ghosts that are, you know, completely optional. So, what exactly happens when you collect these portrait ghosts, you ask? Basically, you take the ghosts back to Professor Egads' lab to get them literally steam pressed back into their paintings. Yeah, this sadistic prick collects souls like they're pogs from the 90s. With how old and decrepit he is, I bet he was alive to cast a vote for slavery if you catch my drift. Mirrors are also something you'll come by a lot, and while I wouldn't advise you to be chanting Bloody Mary three times while looking into them, you can use them with the help of your Game Boy Horror camera to teleport yourself back to the main foyer right next to a- <coughs> Save point. Finally, we can explore the rooms on the first floor. Once I made it here, I started to realize that there were so many different classes of ghosts present in this game. You got ghost bats, ghost rats, no ghost cats. Oh my god, gangbangers! Was this game rated again? And this is pretty much where you learn that King Boo and his gang of boos are behind 99% of the mischief going on in this mansion, and that King Boo was the one holding your brother Mario hostage. And Professor Egads is kind of a passive aggressive. 
sick. I mean, in order to decrease the power of King Boo, you have the option of hunting down all 50 Boos that are hiding throughout the mansion. And this is when the secret function of your Game Boy Horror gets activated. It can now be used as a handy Boo radar to help you scope them out. Like I said earlier, regular ghosts that are cleared from a room don't come back once the lights are turned on, but Boos can literally hide anywhere regardless of whether the lights are on or off. And actually, catching up with some of these guys can be a pain in the ass. Speaking of pains in my ass. Can we talk about the issue of save points and the really unruly health system in this game for a second? Sometimes you're gonna get your bumble rocked by ghosts, and it's not gonna be pretty. I found that sometimes it felt dang near impossible to farm for hearts while trying not to die from the increasing number of random ghost encounters. And by the way, if you die at low health, you respawn in the main foyer with the same amount of health you had before you died. That's right, there's no HP boost back to 100, you're starting from the bottom. Eventually, I figured out a pretty basic trick to gaining back health by literally going in and out of the same room as the items like hearts would respawn shortly after. But before I caught on to that, I found myself getting pretty frustrated as the game picked up in difficulty, and that's why save points in this game can feel like a godsend. Yeah, as reluctant as I am to talk to Toad, talking to Toad acts as a save point, and I don't know what it is about restrooms, but aside from the two separate locations I found, I feel like I always wound up running into this guy in the bathroom, which is just like, so uncomfortable. How am I supposed to do my business with you staring at me? Well, what? I'm trying to suck. Toad, not here. I, I told you I can't be doing this anymore. My family's watching. Oh. Oh. <gasps> Segwaying back into my original point, I mentioned save points and health systems briefly because once you catch a boo and store it in your inventory, you're given the option to save the game right then and there. So at times if I was low on health and couldn't find a toad nearby, I'd capture a nearby boo, as catching one would save my progress up until that point. It still wouldn't replenish my health though. There's way more portrait ghosts in the first floor that need to be captured in comparison to the second, and you know what? Some of them genuinely frightened me a bit. Even the Luigi over here couldn't keep his cool, but I do like that even in the face of imminent danger, Luigi still has the time to hum the soundtrack to his impending doom. I mean, I'll give it to him, this guy's got a pretty good sense of humor, and his fourth wall breaking is... it's unprecedented. <laughs> We're all gonna die. But seriously, two of the ghosts that really stuck out to me here was the freaky fortune teller and the wandering butler. You know what, can we petition to call the wandering butler the freaky butler or something? Because after what I'm about to tell you, there's no contest. The freaky fortune teller really stuck out to me because unlike all the other portrait ghosts, she was the only one who seemed to have a neutral stance on the whole liking humans thing. Also, she kind of has this weird Stockholm syndrome going on, but for the most part, she asks us to go off and retrieve some of Mario's belongings hidden around the mansion so she can help us decipher his whereabouts and figure out more details behind his kidnapping. When all the items finally get returned to the freaky fortune teller, she says that she can finally return home to her painting, which she refers to as her little bit of sweet release. Uh, morbid, but okay. Only to put up a struggle when you have to suck. Lady, do I look like Christian Grey? Make up your mind. And you think that's weird? Look at this freak. <laughs> Guys, the wandering butler is by far the creepiest ghost in the whole dang game. As soon as I lit those candles, I was shook. This guy immediately pops off and makes some really unsettling noises. It took me a while to figure out what I was supposed to do here, but apparently you have to follow him down the hallway into this room, wait for him to sit down, and then use the Poltergust 3000. But if you don't grab him when he's vulnerable and just watch him, he does the weirdest thing that I can only describe as... Okay, that was the freakiest thing I've ever seen. Oh, and I should probably mention that before getting to King Boo, on your way through the different floors, there's also some mini boss battles you have to go through. One known as Bulosis, a giant boo comprised of smaller boo, Chauncey, a baby ghost that's honestly giving me some Sonic Dream vibes, and Bogmire, which I don't have too much to say about it except for the fact that his boss sequence literally reminds me of a Kingdom Hearts heartless encounter. <laughs> talk about Bulosis for a second. 
and why he's a piece of shit. This is my least favorite boss battle because of how hard it was to destroy the boos. Luigi has no precision with his aim, so often when I think a boo was behind me, it was actually in front of me, and the camera angle here really didn't help with this. Not playing many GameCube games myself, I already had a lot of issues incorporating the C-Stick, so a lot of this fight was agonizing. I died here the most, and I was pretty much ready to give up right after this happened. After finishing up some side missions and blowing past some more portrait ghosts on the third floor, you finally gain access to the secret altar, where Mario is being held captive. And just like Professor Egad's, King Boo also gazes upon his painting and sees it as a work of art, full of life in the most literal sense. And yeah, while what he's done might be a little crazed, I mean, can you really blame him? You know what? I actually kind of sympathize with King Boo. I mean, just think about it. Yeah, sure, he's essentially trying to start his own revolution, but I'd be tired of seeing my friends held captive in paintings for some dried up abortion self-amusement too. He just fed up and wants his own form of retribution. And Mario kinda sucks, so I honestly don't know whose side to take here. Oh, but he says he wants the Luigi painting now, does he? Now you've gone too far, my friend. So we have to fight to the death, and with King Boo being a ghost, he made sure to take the form of the most menacing creature he knows of. Bowser. It's a decent boss battle and took me a while to figure out just what to do, but once I had my opening it was pretty easy to finish him off. One thing I found myself wondering was, did Boo transform into Bowser or was that some kind of demon possession? Because after you defeat him, they both get locked into a painting, so I mean he must have been possessed, right? You okay there pal? You're looking a little under the weather, you might want to lie down. <laughs> So Mario was placed into the ghost machine and is successfully stretched back to normal health, and just like any great game should, Luigi's Mansion ends on a heartwarming moment shared between two brothers. <laughs> And not only did we finish this game, but we also managed to get everything on our list. We caught all the ghosts, we freed Mario, we sucked all the boot. Wait a second, I forgot to water the plants! Luigi's Mansion was one of my favorite games to play for the Nintendo GameCube. It's a short and sweet, enjoyable little game that takes around six to seven hours to complete if you go without stopping, including completing all the side missions. You can even give the game a second go in a mode known as Hidden Mansion, which is essentially the hard mode of the game that activates after completing your first playthrough. It's a great game to play around the October season, and graphically and story-wise, and just based on overall enjoyment, it still holds up to this day. Although I'd be lying if I didn't say that being able to beat the game in under 6 hours sort of left me wanting a bit more from it content-wise, but hey, the new game's coming out in a couple hours, so I'm excited to see what they're gonna do with it. And I, I don't have the second game, so, you know, for the sake of the, the video, it, the second game don't exist. Now I know what you're thinking. Generally, you don't see this kind of use in a major appliance. But in tonight's episode, literally anything's possible. I should know. I'm editing it. Happy Halloween, you guys. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a date with a green-eyed monster.
blamed me.